uh, we've seen just about all of the, the main tools of integration that we're going to see. Uh, today I just wanted to kind of review them in a fast way and maybe even introduce one more nice substitution that you might have. But it's, it's not a new technique. It's just a, a clever substitution. Uh, before we get to that, I want to do one more integration by partial fractions problem uh, just to highlight this case where the degree of the numerator is actually bigger than the degree of the denominator. So today will just be basically a review of methods. Plus the uh, two inverse tangents of Z-trick. Two inverse tangents of z, two arctan of z. You guys don't know what it is yet, but you will. Okay, so let me get a nice, a nice function to integrate. So we want to integrate this monstrosity, five x to the fourth plus four x cubed minus five x squared minus 4x plus 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. OK, ideas. Factor the bottom. When I factor the bottom, I will get 1 minus x times 1 plus x. All right, now once I factor the bottom and I have 1 minus x, 1 plus x, what does that make me think to do? Partial fractions. Right. Now, what are the rules for partial fractions when you have distinct linear factors? What do you need? You need, well, okay, they're distinct, it's fine. Uh, what else do you need? Well, that should be a polynomial, okay? And what else do you need? One more condition. Exactly. The degree of the numerator should be strictly smaller than the degree of the denominator. In this case, the degree of the denominator is 2. And what's the degree of the numerator? It's 4, right? So we don't meet the partial fractions condition. So what we said at the time was that was OK. Right? You're going to get into those situations, and all you have to do is divide. Okay? You're going to divide this polynomial by this polynomial. Okay? And just for fun, why don't we go through that calculation in case you know it's been a while since you've done that sort of thing. So we're going to divide 1 minus x squared in that's not a square root into 5x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x So the way you do this is you always look for the highest degree term right, for here. And you say, OK, what do I need to multiply it by, this minus x squared? Hmm? Right. Well, if I multiply it by 5x squared, I'll get minus 5x to the fourth. Right? But I always want to match it. So, so it would be minus 5x squared. So I'm always trying to figure out what I need to multiply it by to get this term. Now once I do that, okay, I get 5x to the fourth. Then I'm also going to get minus 5x squared times 1, which is minus 5x squared. That'll go under here. And I have no x to the, to the third. And then you always are subtracting, just like long division in grammar school. Okay, so I subtract. That's nice, zero. And what about over here? Let's see, minus 5, minus, minus 10. So it's minus 5 plus 10.
this might, might, let me put this out further. This minus, you're subtracting the entire expression. Yeah? Okay, so you think there's, there's parentheses around this. Well, I, said, I said plus 10. I don't know why I said that. Minus 5, minus, minus 5. That's minus 5 plus 5. Zero. Right? This whole thing is zero. You, well, you always, anytime you're doing long division, just with numbers, oh. right? You, when you write this down, you subtract. Yes. Okay. So that means uh, I'm going to multiply all the things by minus? Oh, yeah. At every step of the way, when you, it's not even that you're multiplying it by minus, it's just you're saying it. This expression, right, minus this expression. Oh. Okay. And then you're left with. All right, you can bring this down, minus 4x plus 1. Right. And, well, you say, fine. That uh, doesn't, that can't go into there. So that's your remainder. Okay. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Yes, thank you. I forgot to subtract that. So that's, yeah. Sometimes it's a good idea to write in your plus 0x cubed. Yeah. Because then you remember I need to subtract. Good. Very good. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, fine. So we have a little more work. Good. So now what do I need to multiply minus x squared by to get 4x cubed? Minus 4x. Okay. When I do that, I'll get my 4x cubed. And then a minus 4x, which will match up with this term. 0x squared, and we'll even put it in just to avoid embarrassment. And we subtract. And when we subtract, okay, the, these cancel as they should. There's no x squared. And then we have minus 4x, minus, minus 4x. So again, these go away. And you're just left with this, this 1. And so that's our remainder term, 1 over 1 minus x squared. Huh? That's a little better, right? So <laughs> let's see here. So this becomes a, well, let me see. I can pull out some stuff. Minus 5 integral of x squared, uh, minus 4 integral of x, uh, plus integral 1 over 1 minus x squared. Yeah, this is definitely an improvement. Okay, so of course we're going to know how to do these first two integrals. No problem there. What about this last one? Partial fractions, yeah. Right? This will factor as 1 minus x and 1 plus x. Right? And now we can apply partial fractions to it. So let's, let's do so. You're going to break this up. It's going to have two terms. One term will be over 1 minus x. One term will be over 1 plus x. Okay, we clear denominators. We get 1 equals a times 1 plus x plus b times 1 minus x. We lift and separate. So there's an ax and a minus bx. So a minus b times x, and we have an a and a b. Okay, so a minus b is 0, because there's no x term on the left. And a plus b is 1. Fine. A minus B is 0 means A and B are equal. So A plus B is just 2A. 2A equals 1. A equals a half. Of course, if A equals a half, so does B. Okay. So let's go through and take care of some business. Uh, the integral of x squared by the power rule 
is one third x cubed. So I get minus five thirds x cubed. Uh, the integral of x by the power rule is a half x squared. So minus four times a half, which is two x squared. Plus, well, right now we're gonna have to break this, this integral up. And the coefficients on each is a half. So I break those out. I get a half integral of one over one minus x dx plus a half integral uh, one over one plus x dx. Okay, so now for each one of these, you either use substitution, right, or you recall we had this formula which told us what to do when you have the integral of 1 over ax plus b. Right? It ends up being 1 over a natural log of ax plus b plus a constant. So let's see here. Let's try to clean this up here. Minus 5 thirds x squared minus 2x squared. Okay, now this one, the a is what? Negative 1. So we get 1 over negative 1, which is a negative. So this positive becomes a negative. We also pick up a half. So we have a half ln. Well, absolute value of ax plus b. Well, there's your ax plus b. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. Okay, so we get 1 minus x. And then for this one, the a is 1. So we get, oh, that should have been a minus. That was the whole point. A half ln absolute value of 1 plus x plus c. And if you like, you can combine these LNs into one natural log, but at this point, I don't like. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, yes. This one? Yeah. You mean break it up as 5x to the fourth over this? Yeah. Four, okay, so Dean's question is whether or not we can take this fraction and break it up into one, two, three, four, five fractions. And the answer is, of course, yes, you can do that. And uh, some of them might be very easy to then integrate, right? For instance, uh, the minus 4x over 1 minus x squared, that has a good chance. There's a, uh, some chance of this one. Uh, but in general, of course, the way you're going to end up having to do it is to just do polynomial division on these one at a time. And of course, what's the point of that? Right? So yes, you can do it. It is absolutely legal, not advisable. Chris? How did we get the minus 1 half ln? So the integral of 1 over 1 minus x, and we, we could view this instead as minus x plus 1. And this formula told us whatever the, the a is, in this case it's minus 1, that has to pop out here as a 1 over a. So that's where we got a minus. Right. So are, are, have you seen a sufficient number of partial fractions examples to try a few of these on your own, you think? I hope so. We've done quite a few, I think. Uh, Okay, so let's let's just go back and do a uh, nice. Oh yeah, polynomial division, as opposed to just immediately doing the partial fractions. Well, remember the key was to do partial fractions. The numerator has to have smaller degree than the denominator. If it doesn't, you can't use partial fractions yet. You have to divide first. If the numerator is smaller, then it makes no sense to divide, right? 
if you divide 3 by 7, you get 0 remainder 3. And you're basically back to 0 plus 3 over 7. You haven't changed things. And the same thing happens here. If the numerator is smaller, when you divide, you'll just get back exactly the same fraction you started with. Right? So that tells you. Look at the degrees. Let's give this problem a shot. I've already spoiled the surprise by telling you to use substitution. <laughs> but really, when you look at it, what else would you try? Mm, partial fractions, we use that when we have linear factors, yeah? All right, possibly quadratic factors. But here we got root factors. We don't have any idea how to handle that situation with partial fractions. And when I say we, I mean you. <laughs> yeah, you substitution or by parts. And typically we've avoided using parts when, uh, when you have fractions, yeah? Not that you can't use it, just we've, we've avoided it. So, okay, so substitution is pretty much all that's left. What would be a reasonable substitution? Okay, you could try u equals 1 minus x. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so du, right, negative 1 dx. And, well, we know we're going to make that into square root of u. And then what's that x going to be? It's going to be, right? So if u is 1 minus x, then, well, put the x on the other side and subtract the u. And u is 1 minus, well, x is 1 minus u. Okay, so you could do this. And, well, let's see, this dx, we could turn it into a du if we just shoot out a negative. And then we are going to have du over 1 minus u times the square root of u, or if you like, u to the 1 half. Hmm. Yeah, this is a bit annoying. It, it transferred the problem. I mean, we don't have a square root of some garbage anymore. But we still have a square root. And, well, it would be really nice if we, could, we knew a partial fractions trick now for a linear factor and a root factor, but we really haven't done that. So that square root is just a pain in the rump. Yeah? No, that's a, that's a defect of the chalkboard. <laughs> that's not something I can control. <laughs> that's just a, a stain. <laughs> yeah, I didn't write that. That's just there. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so what the philosophy of substitution is, is when you have something that you don't like, you try to substitute it away, right? You hide it in your substitution. So, okay, so we don't like the square root, so, so Jenna suggests we'll throw that in there. Right? So, of course, now we have to redo all our calculations. So if we do that, well, I could compute du directly, but then I have to differentiate the square root, and uh, it's just kind of ugly. So the trick in these sort of situations, right, is first square the u. Then we know that u squared is 1 minus x. And while we're at it, we might as well solve for x as long as we're here. Right? Okay, so x is 1 minus u squared. But of course, we're going to need du. And the way you can get du is by differentiating this middle equation. And if we do that, well, you don't just get du anymore. You actually have to use the chain rule, and you get 2u du. So 2u du is minus 1 dx. Or, if you like, I can move the minus to the other side, and minus 2u du equals dx. Okay. Now we try putting this all back in. So, well, I might as well pull out that minus 2. That's just an annoyance. 
and I get a u du on top. And on bottom, let's see, the x turns into 1 minus u squared. And the square root of 1 minus x turns into a u. And those u's will cancel. And so we're left with minus 2 integral of du over 1 minus u squared. How are we going to solve that? Wrong. We are not going to use partial fractions. Yeah. We are absolutely not going to use partial fractions. <laughs> Would you use what? You can't use that, no? No, we're not going to use trig substitution. Huh? No, we're not going to use it. No, 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 no. No, we're not going to use the trig substitution. We're not going to use partial fractions. No, we're not, yeah, that's 1 plus x squared. The inverse tangent is 1 plus x squared. No, what are we going to use? We're going to be clever. We're going to be smart. The tabular method? No, we're not going to use the tabular method. No, no, no. We're going to use the fact that we just computed the integral of 1 over 1 minus x squared. We already know the answer. We don't need to redo it again. You see, in math you learn. If you've already calculated it, you don't have to calculate it again. No? OK, so we, all we have to do is rewrite this. Minus 2, a half integral. What? Oh, wait, we don't need to write any of that out either. We know what the end of the answer is going to be. Oh, my goodness. So look, we already know the answer. It's all this stuff that was right at the end of this one. So we get a half with a minus ln absolute value of 1 minus u right? plus a half ln absolute value of 1 plus u. So of course, we get a plus c on the end. OK, and then we're really happy because this minus 2 is going to go in and kill some of those halves, flip the signs. So let's see, we'll get uh, ln absolute value of 1 minus u, but we know what u is, square root of 1 minus x. So 1 minus square root of 1 minus x plus, actually it becomes a minus, ln absolute value of 1 plus square root of 1 minus x. Now, don't be afraid to reuse work you've already done. If you already know the answer, don't redo it. <laughs> Just quote it. Maybe on the midterm, I give you a problem, uh, and you solve it. And then in the next problem, it reduces to the same integral. You're going to redo the same integral on the next problem? No, oh, you're just going to say, by problem 1a, da 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 da. <laughs> no? OK, be aware of what you've done. Don't, don't solve math in a vacuum. Solve math, solve math problems. Unless it's one of those, those super powerful Hoovers, that, that's kind of fun to grasp. Yeah. So. Okay, what time do we have here? Okay, very good. Any questions? No, no I'm not insane. <laughs> but I appreciate you for asking. All right, let's, uh, let's try a partial fraction, uh, integration by parts. And we'll use the tabular method, since people seem to like that. Okay. This is going to be one that requires cleverness. Okay, we're going to integrate x times arctan. Now, this one, you should look at and say, yeah, that's integration by parts. Right? I mean, there should be no hesitation in your mind, right? It's not substitution. This is not partial fractions. This is not a boating accident. Okay? This is integration by parts. That was a Jaws reference. I don't know if you guys have seen Jaws before. <laughs> All right, so what will be my u and what will be my dv? OK, 
Okay, or in the tabular, what's going on the left and what's going on the right? Yeah. Lions in Africa tackle elephants because nobody has come up with anything better. I came up with Okay, so inverse tan, right? That comes from the I, inverse trig function. X, that's an algebraic function, right? Polynomial. That comes from there. Okay, so we put the arctan on the left and we put the X on the right. Yeah. If you uh, if you don't if you don't want to remember L I A T E for some reason, you can always ask the question, which would I rather integrate? Yeah? Oh, yeah, which, which is the easier one to integrate? Okay, so th this is another way of uh, helping you make your decision, right? Just personal preference. <laughs> I would rather integrate x. Okay, so the derivative of arctan, Chris knows this one. 1 over 1 plus x squared, okay. The integral of x, yeah, a half x squared. Now, at this point, right, our next step would be to differentiate that, but already this is not going to be so fun. Okay, so what we do is we play this, this special game where we can move things around. Okay. So what would be really nice is if I could just get a constant on the left. Why is that nice? Well, that means in the next term when I, or in the next step when I take a derivative, it'll go to zero and I'll be done. So what I'm allowed to do, so I draw these little arrows, okay, and I move, say, this one half across to this side, and I'm going to move the one plus x squared, right, it's really one over it, to the other side. Right? You're allowed to do this. The integration by parts method says when you do integration by parts once, this is your new integral, and you can split it up any way you want to. Right? In the second step, you'd integrate a half x squared times 1 over 1 plus x squared. And you don't need to keep the same choices of u and of dv. Right? You can make them anything you like. So I'll move the 1 half across. And I'll move over here x squared over 1 plus x squared. Okay? So this x squared stayed. And the 1 over 1 plus x squared moved across. And then usually what I do is to help keep track of this little transformation. I'll put a little box around it. Okay. Now, one, the next step is easy, at least half of it. I differentiate a half. Okay, that goes to zero. <laughs> Not so bad. But what about this guy? I'm supposed to integrate x squared over 1 plus x squared. Am I allowed to do this? x squared over 1 plus x squared over x squared? Yeah. Right. No, you're never allowed to split denominators, just numerators. Well, tell me, what's the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator? Are you allowed to take a fraction and subtract one from the top and the bottom? Well, let's see. Take the fraction um, two fourths. That's it's a half, right? Two fourths. Let's subtract one from the bottom and the top. You get one over three. Is that the same thing? <laughs> or we could divide. Yeah. So of course you could do something like this, right? Write one plus x squared, and then put a minus one. And that'll work, right? Because now you'll get 1 over 1 minus x squared. I mean, 1 plus x squared. Yeah? Or, if you don't see that cleverness, you can just do polynomial division. Right? And when you do polynomial division, you'll get 1 minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay? So you have your, your choice which one you want to do. Okay? In any case, you're going to get right, uh, the same thing 1 over uh, 1 plus 1, sorry, minus, minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. And integrating this is a piece of cake. Yeah. 
You do it term by term. What's the integral of 1? And what's the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared? Chris? Inverse tan. Okay, and since we have a zero on the left, we know we're done. So we draw our lines. Now, it's important when you end up doing these boxes, since you've twisted things around, right, you can have a line going into the top of a box. Right? But the only lines you can have, you can't have any lines in the box. You only have lines going out of the bottom. So it goes like that. Because okay, you've made this transformation. This is no longer this, this top term on the top, you're no longer using it anymore. This has become your new U. Okay, and so the answer becomes, well, let's see, the top one we get a half x squared arctangent of x. And then we get minus a half x minus arctangent. Of course, we could uh, we could put all those tangents together. We could write uh, a half uh, arctan of x x squared plus one, and then we're just left with an x over two. Okay, so that's that's not so bad. Just algebra. Questions? Mm, maybe I thought I had another one of those. Maybe I do. Maybe I'll do another one just like that. Right, we'll get a little more practice with this whole moving things around in your table. This one is not one that you're, you immediately see and think, oh, that's partial uh, integration by parts. But we can do it. One reason to try integration by parts on this is you look at it and you, you go through your list of techniques and none of them seem to work, right? You go, well, okay, substitution. I don't know what to substitute. Uh, no, there's no partial fraction to really mess around with. You don't have a polynomial on top. Trig substitution is silly. Mm -hmm. No? Doesn't really look like integration by parts, but maybe if I rewrote it, it would look a little better. Now at least it really feels like it's a product of functions. And of course, math is all about feeling, right? All right, so if I want to use integration, I said, I hope I didn't say partial fractions. But, uh, if I want to in use integration by parts, what will be my u and what my dv? Now, yeah, why? It's a logarithmic function, right? That's the first thing. And what would you rather have to integrate, ln of x or x to the minus 2? Okay, it's clear, right? Okay, so we make our ln of x our u and then our x to the minus 2 is going to be our dv. Okay, so we differentiate ln of x. Ah, so nice. Back from the land of differentiation when calculus was easy. Okay, so there's a nice 1 over x. And what's the integral of x to the minus 2? Let's see, we add 1 to the exponent and then we do 1 over the exponent. Okay, so we just get a minus. Well, now this is really, really nice, right? If I was going to start differentiating this again, it would just get really, really bad. But if I just toss this to the other side, I'll just make this into it. I mean, I could view this as x to the minus 1. Right? I'll just move it over, and I get x to the minus 2. And I'll just leave a minus 1 on the other side. I'll just move this negative across. 
So I'll make this into a negative 1. And then this becomes x to the minus 2. It's always a really nice idea if you can get that constant on the left. Because you know the next term, you'll just differentiate and go to 0. And as long as you can integrate what's on the right, and we can, then we're okay. So the integral of x to the minus 2, well, we actually already did that one. So we don't even think about it again. We just copy. Minus x to the minus 1. And okay, so I take, we'll take this minus 1 that's in front and move it across. Okay. Now take this x to the minus 1 and move it across. So I'm left with a minus 1 on the left. And well, x to the one, minus 1 times x to the minus 1 is x to the minus 2. And now I draw my line. I can go into the box on the top, but I have to come out of the box on the bottom. Draw my plus and my minus. And now I get uh, minus ln of x over x. Minus, minus, minus is minus uh, x to the minus 1. So if I like, I could put these all together and get minus, I'll put it even on top, uh, 1 minus ln of x all over x. All right, sorry. That's, no, I think that's just silly what I've written. We'll do minus ln of x plus 1. That'll make it easier to read. Yeah, so minus ln of x plus 1 over x. Plus C, naturally. So this tabular method is, is more versatile than uh, you know it first appears. And of course, it takes a little practice, but so does everything. <laughs> okay. So this is quite nice. Um, any questions about it? Can we get all those done? No. Yeah, I mean, this is ln of x times x inverse, right? Or x to the minus 1. So but that's the same as 1 over x. So ln of x times 1 over x is just ln of x over x. I think it's nice. This does seem like a lot less work than writing all the u's and dv's. <laughs> Well, I mean, just a, it just depends on what you mean. Um, we also use this method in cases where you don't differentiate down to zero. For instance, when you wanted to integrate something like sine of x times e to the x. Yeah, then you can use this method. Oh, yeah, we sure can. Yeah? We just have to understand what's going on. Okay, when we differentiate, Cosine of x, you integrate, you get e to the x. You differentiate again, and you get minus sine of x, and you get e to the x. And at this point, up to this minus sign, you've, you've gotten back your original integral. Right? And so what you know that this means, is you can draw lines diagonally, and then you draw one more line at the bottom. Right? We do our plus, minus, plus. And, well, we'll do it slowly at first. If I call this i then this is going to be, well, both of these terms are going to have an e to the x, so I'll factor that out. And I'll get sine of x minus cosine of x, right, both times e to the x, this term and this term. Okay. And then the last one is, well, minus my original i. Of course, I don't have to write that. I could just say, well, geez, when I have minus i, it's, I really add it to the other side, 
and I'll get 2i. And then I'll divide by 2, and I'll get i equal to half times this guy. Okay, 2 is a hard number. This one here? Well, this is just telling you that you're going to get, you're going to add on, all right, this i that's here. Okay, of course, it picks up an extra minus, so it really becomes subtracting the i. So, of course, this only works when you end up repeating the original integral up to a constant. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, and, and of course, this is going to happen when you're integrating or differentiating your sign you know, or some trig function, right? Then, then there's a chance that you could uh, repeat, especially when you have a sine and say an e to the x. Right. You're gonna get these situations popping up. Okay, uh, so I wanna take the last 20 minutes or so to show you a nice substitution that you can use. And it's a, it's a way of getting rid of trig functions. Okay. Now, what, what's interesting, you know, when we had trig substitution, this is a way of introducing trig functions into the game. Uh, and in this trick, we're going to try to get rid of them. And what we want to do is start with a rational function. Okay, so rational function typically meant a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Only instead of having polynomials, or at least all polynomials, we might, instead of having an x, have a trig function. Okay. And then we want to make a very clever substitution. And once we make that clever substitution, we turn our, our function into a new function, which is a honest-to-goodness rational function, a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Because then we know we have a lot of, of tricks for trying to solve these. Okay, so let me, let me start with one, and I'll tell you the transformation and see how we use it. <coughs> so we'd like to integrate this seemingly benign function, which we have no idea how to solve. Unless one of you do. I mean, Integration by parts seems smooth. Well, we could try it. Right. But what would you do? Uh, you could do all. Jeez, uh, I, I just don't know. <laughs> I don't want. I mean, I, you could make that your u, right? And then your dv could be the one. But now you have to. This is a quotient. Thing. I mean, this is to the minus one. This is oh, this, this is rotten. Okay, I don't want to do it. Uh, you can do partial fractions, but except that's not a polynomial. Uh, trig substitution seems pointless since we already have a trig function. Okay. Okay. So we'll try a different sort of trig substitution then. And here's what it's going to be. We're going to replace all of our x's with two times the arc tangent of well, we need a new variable. Call it z. Okay, this is our substitution. Yeah, please. <laughs> Using what? Can we use the partial fractions method with the trig function and the denominator? We haven't developed any theory that allows us to do that. Hmm? Fair, enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that it can't be done. It's that we, if it can, we don't know. So we're going to try this seemingly random substitution. Okay. Now, let's, uh, you know, whenever we did trig substitution, the, one of the first things that we had to figure out, other than, well, we need no dx's, uh, but one of the first things we needed to figure out is, in the end, what our sine and cosine 
Because once we know sine and cosine, right, we get all the other trig functions. Right? So let's try to write down what sine of x and cosine of x are. Right? And that's not a bad idea since in the end we need to know how to substitute away this cosine of x. So let me, uh, let me make this box a little bigger for us. Well, first we can do dx. If x is 2 arctan of z, what is dx? Chris, you should know this one. Yeah, or in this case it's a z, so plus z squared. Okay. And then, of course, we get our dz. Yep. Okay, that's nice. What about sine of x and cosine of x? Well, let's see here. When we compute this arctan of z, Somehow, we should be able to use this to build a right triangle. Sine of x, for instance, is going to be the sine of 2 arctan of z. Right? Because x is 2 arctan of z, so sine of x is sine of 2 arctan of z. Right? Now, this is a double angle. Yeah? Sine of 2x. Now, there's a formula for that. Now, let's see. Sine or say of 2 theta. Right. Anybody remember what it is? There's no alpha over 2. Let's see. Sine theta, cosine theta, but there are two of them. Yeah. So it's 2 sine theta, cosine theta. Of course, if you know the, how to add, you know, or do the adding, addition formula, right? Sine of alpha plus beta, this is a consequence of it. All right. And while we're at it, we might as well put down the cosine one. Yeah. Ich bin klug means I am clever. No, like I said, this is a seemingly random substitution, right? This takes a little bit of, of thought to come up with this clever idea. Okay? And we'll see if, that it really is clever in a second. Okay, so what about cosine of 2 theta? What's the... Uh, there's actually three of them that you can write down pretty easily. But maybe the one that you remember... Fastest is this one. Cosine squared minus sine squared. Okay, so two tangent, arc tangent of z, if we take its sine, it's actually the same as two sine of arc tangent of z times cosine of arc tangent of z. Well, given the look on Jenna's face right now, uh, can we get that? <laughs> right. uh, you know, th th this looks really bad, yeah? Ah, this is really good. Let's draw a little triangle. Arc tangent of z means what? You have a number... All right, and you, then you take the arc tangent that gives you an angle. And how does that angle relate to that number? Well, it means if you took the tangent of this angle, you would get that number. Right? So the tangent of some angle, say theta, should be z. Okay? The arc tangent of z is this angle theta. Okay? So the tangent of theta should be z, but the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite over the adjacent should be z. So we'll put a z here and a 1 there, and now the opposite over the adjacent is z. And so the tangent of this angle is z. Right? And so the, now really the arc tangent of z is this angle. And by the Pythagorean theorem, of course, we know what the, the length of the hypotenuse is. And now, well, 
the sine of the arctangent of z is just the sine of this angle. Because we set up the arctangent of z to be this angle theta. So what's the sine of this angle? Theta. Well, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we get z over the square root of 1 plus z squared. And then we need the cosine of this angle. The cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So 1 over the square root of 1 plus z squared. And multiplying this all together, we get 2z over 1 plus z squared. So that's what our sine of x will be. And the cosine of x, we compute similarly using this formula. Well, co it's cosine of 2 arctangent of z, right, which is cosine squared of arctangent of z minus sine squared arctangent of z. OK, and we just said the cosine of the arctangent of z was 1 over the square root of 1 plus z squared. Right? This is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And if we square it, then you'll get 1 over 1 plus z squared. And then we have to subtract the square of the sine. Right? The sine was the opposite over the hypotenuse, so z squared over 1 plus z squared. And of course, these have common denominators, so we can combine them. And we get 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared. Okay, so that's what our cosine of x is. Okay, so it seems like we've made a bit of a mess. But here's the upshot. Whenever you have a rational function of trig functions, like sine and cosine, that is, right, this transformation is going to give you a new function that is just a rational function of z. Okay, it's going to really be a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Okay, so I can rewrite this expression as, well, let's see, dx is 2 over 1 plus z squared, and then we got a, a dz up there. And 2 plus cosine of x is 2 plus, well, cosine of x is 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared. And now this is all just a matter of, of working this out, right, to get a, a, a nice polynomial that we know how to deal with. or at least a rational function. So let's, let's copy this over. So we have 2 over 1 plus z squared over 2 plus 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared, this is all dz. This? Yeah. This is just a trig formula. <laughs> this right here? Yeah. Okay, so we make this substitution. X equals 2 arctan of z. Dx is then 2 over 1 plus z squared dz. So I just replace dx with 2 over 1 plus z squared dz. Okay. The 2 plus becomes 2 plus, and then we showed that cosine of x oh, okay. is 1 minus z squared over 1 plus. OK, so let's fiddle with this thing so that it simplifies. So on the bottom, uh, let me make this 2 times 1 plus z squared over 1 plus z squared. Right. Let me fiddle. I have this on the bottom. Right. And I'll write this as 2 times 1 plus z squared over 1 plus z squared plus 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared. And I do this just so I have a common denominator so I can add these fractions together. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so here I have how many z squared? I have two z squared minus a z squared gives me one z squared. And then I have two and another one is plus three. And I'm still over one plus z squared. So that means I can rewrite this as the integral of 2 over 1 plus z squared over z squared plus 3 over 1 plus z squared. Okay. So you have a fraction a over b divided by a fraction c over b. It's actually the same denominator. So if you divide, it'll flip. The 1 plus z squared will cancel. And you'll be left with 2 over z squared plus 3 dz. Right. Of course, I don't care for the 2. Let's pull that out. And now, well, we actually saw how to compute this. If this was a 1, Chris would know what to do. No? But it's a 3. We saw what happens when you have a 3 here, right? or any a squared here. Okay. It's going to end up being 2. Then you have to do 1 over the square root of this number times the arctan of z over the square root of that number. Okay, and so now it's a, it's a question of how to get back everything. And I, I want to, I just leave this for now for you guys to still try to get your x's back in. Okay. If you have problems with it, show me. I just want to set up, do we have time? Yeah, I just want to set up another one to show you what's going on here. And that we, we don't have to do a lot of work again. So there's more here, right? You have to figure out what, you have to rewrite this all in terms of x. So I set up another one, though. Okay. So this is, again, a rational function with sines and cosines in it. A polynomial over, well, it's almost a polynomial, except you got these sines and cosines. Okay. You make the exact same substitution. x equals 2 arctangent of z. Okay. And when you do that, you get to make all the exact same identifications. Okay. The dx becomes 2 over 1 plus z squared times dz. One plus becomes one plus. Sine of x, right? That was two z over one plus z squared. And minus cosine of x, and cosine of x was one minus z squared over one plus z squared. And now again, it's just a simple matter of, of sorting out all these fractions. Now look here, uh, I could make 1 into a 1 plus z squared over 1 plus z squared. Okay. So then how many z squareds will I have? Well, I'll have 1 z squared minus minus plus another one, so 2 z squared. So let me copy here. Okay, so I'll have 2 z squared. Then I'll have this 1, 2 z, and no other just z terms. And then I'll have a 1 from the, remember this is 1 plus z squared over 1 plus z squared, so I have a 1. And then I'll have a minus 1, that's just a 0, so there's no constant term. And this is all over 1 plus z squared. And again, I have a fraction divided by a fraction with the same denominator, so that the denominators just cancel. And so I get 2 over 
2z squared plus 2z. The 2's all cancel. So I just get integral of dz over z squared plus z. And what would I do to this to solve it? z squared plus z should make you think to do something immediately. Yeah, pull a factor of z out. And now I have a product of linear factors on the bottom, and so I would use what to solve this? Partial fraction. Okay, okay so I won't, I won't go any further with this one. So this is very nice. When you have When you have the integral of, I'm going to write it this way. When I write r, actually let me write it with a p. If I have p, I mean a polynomial. right? But I'm also, if I put parentheses, I'm going to allow some other functions. So if I have a polynomial, but I allow more than just x, I allow also sine or cosine. Divide it by another polynomial. I'm going to call it Q. But I also allow sines and cosines. Then I make the substitution x equals 2 arctan of z. dx becomes 2 over 1 plus z squared dz. Sine of x becomes 2z over 1 plus z squared. And cosine of x becomes 1, is it minus? Yeah. 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared. So you can use this to rewrite this polynomial with sines and cosines over a polynomial with sines and cosines into a new function which has no sines and cosines. Okay? It's just going to be a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And in principle, that might be easier. All right, you can use now you can use substitution or your partial fractions method. Now, I don't want you to memorize this. I want you to be aware that this, as well as many other tricks of this form, are out there. Right? They're all you can look these things up in nice books. I can show you stuff. It's not hard to find these things. Okay, but it, it, it's it's nice to know where you can find them and never in case you're ever confronted with this sort of situation. Okay. And to know that, well, OK, it, it, it looks random, but it's set up to work. That's the point. Okay. It's just, I'm just saying you, these are polynomials. All right? But instead of just having x's, I'm also allowed sine of x and cosine of x. You know, just like here, I could make this a square too, right? That doesn't hurt me. I could make that a, a cube. So it can look like a polynomial, but every once in a while, instead of having the x, I put a sine. Right? If I, instead of the x to the fifth, I put a sine to the fifth or a cosine to the fifth. Right? Yeah? Like here to here? And so for instance, here I turn this 1 into a 1 plus z squared over 1 plus z squared. So now I have three fractions all over 1 plus z squared. So I can combine their numerators. Right? That's what I did to get this new numerator right, over this denominator. So, and then I do division of fractions. Okay? And so these 1 plus z squareds cancel when you do that. And you're left with 2 over 2z two squared plus 2z. You cancel 2. All right? You get to their factor you would do. At that point, it becomes just algebra. Yeah. By the way, if you have things other than sines and cosines, other trig functions, that's not such a problem. But if you actually have x's in there, that, that would be a problem. Right? If, you had, if that 2 here was an x, well, now when you do x equals 2 arctan of z, now you actually have to put 2 arctan of z in. And now, I mean, this is not going to look good. This is when you have a polynomial 
right, just with sines and, and cosines. Okay, so 